I wouldn't be surprised if when we have grandchildren, which I think that we will, could be. it'll be. All right, it is 7 o'clock. We are going to get started. It's actually 7.01. I'm getting the evil eye from a couple of you. Um, we'll call the meeting to order. Um, we have two presentations next week, um, Asian Pacific American Heritage Month and Memorial Day. Um, if there's no comments on those, we will move right along. Um, into our, we have several public hearings. Uh, the first one is an ordinance to amend the fiscal year 2019 adopted budget. Um, seems like we just passed the budget. Now we'll go back to amend the old budget, but that's what we do around here. Um, last, all right, next week's public hearing, um, the action on this proposed budget amendment will be a roll call vote. I'm trying to give you a heads up. So I'll uh, call on Jenny Tripoli. Just remind you, Jenny's coming up. This is something we used to do like in the January, February yeah. time frame, but we did, and Jenny's going to get in greater detail. Yes. We want to wait until the tax receipts have come in. Don't count your chickens before they hatch. Once they hatch, then we'll come back and then we can look at a more critical eye as to what she's going to talk about tonight. So, anyway, Jenny. Yeah, so uh, fee poll is one of our larger, as you know, tax revenues, and it's one of the most volatile. And it, as we thought about it, it, it seemed to make more sense to wait, as Bill said, until we saw what happened. And that ended up being a really good decision this year because the surprise we got, we weren't expecting, so um, it kind of proved its point in the first year. You, you don't want to, um, you know, count your chickens before they hatch. But also, as you get further along in the fiscal year, you can really see where you need capacity versus where you could transfer things around. Um, as you recall, or you may recall, last year we changed some policies internally uh, to allow budget transfers within departments um, to be, uh, to basically a director can do that up to $100,000 versus it was $5,000 I think before Bill had to sign off and 30000 before we had to bring it to you. And that really didn't give folks an opportunity to kind of move as they needed to. Only the town manager can approve um, save, uh, salary vacancy savings to be moved to something else. And then, of course, anything that's very significant we have to bring to you. Um, and so with that latitude, we could see where we had capacity in other accounts before coming back to the table and asking you all to appropriate more funds. Um, so we're trying to be way more conservative um, as much as possible and to live within our means. Um, that being said, there's always going to be items that you don't plan for. Um, budgets aren't static. Or uh, off-cycle grants, that's a good portion of what we're asking for appropriations here today. And then insurance recoveries. We kind of had a, a heck of a year when it came to people hitting our traffic boxes, destroying traffic lights and, or poles and um, the gym floor, which was brand new, was utterly destroyed by a faulty sprinkler head about, what, a month later, was it? So That was a great day. Yes. Um, so we're putting that money back uh, into the expenditure accounts, but it's offset by the uh, insurance recoveries. So uh, if you go through the, the staff report and the um, and the dollar amounts, really in the general fund, the only ask of pulling from fund balance, so something that's not supported by new revenues this year, uh, it's a $252,500 ask. 200,000 of, 210,000 of that was uh, the final transfer over to the Information Systems Fund for the final portion of the police radio replacement project. That was funded at a total of $840,000. During the FY19 budget process, we had said that was how we were going to handle that. Uh, so that's what we did. And then the, the, the balance of items that we're asking to be funded through fund balance is really the excess um, uh, landfill costs and recycling costs, um, which isn't a surprise because we had to go and ask for a recycling fee increase. So those costs are increasing, and um, we need a little extra money to, to cover that. So that's the general fund side. Water and sewer fund, um, again, that's funded pure, purely by user fees uh, and availability fees. And um, one of these appropriations, we're asking for an additional $292,000 uh, because Fairfax County is going to fund a portion of the Sugarland run relining. So we had to appropriate the expenditure and um, show where the revenue source is coming from. Um, we had. A couple of overages, again, with our water uh, purchase of water and also the sewer treatment. 
sewer treatment. And again, as everybody knows, we had an epic wet season last year. There was additional I and I that's inflow and infiltration into the system. Um, we pay for all of the water that passes through the system. That's why the relining projects are as important as they are. So that resulted in a higher bill. Fairfax Water, uh, we're ending up having to pay them about $110,000 more. Their fiscal year is actually a calendar year. So we see kind of their adjustments after they close their year in January. And so we had to roll with that. Um, we had a couple of sewer lateral repairs that exceeded what was just in the expenditure budget. There's plenty of money in that restricted fund uh, because, as you know, we charge, what is it, 25 cents a quarter? Um, two dollars, sorry, a quarter to uh, to fund, it's two dollars a year actually, sorry, to fund this um, sewer lateral repair account and sometimes we budget about thirty thousand dollars every year for those expenses and sometimes it exceeds that. So this isn't money that we have to find from somewhere, it's already sitting in a restricted fund. Uh, last uh, finance, the finance portion of the water and sewer fund, we did implement units as many of you know and um, there were a couple additional conversion and training fees associated with that so that's coming from net position which is net position is an enterprise funds version of unassigned fund balance in the cemetery uh, cemetery is doing great uh, they just needed a little more money in their memorial sales expense account because their memorial sales revenues are higher and last but not least uh, again in the capital improvements um, fund that $118,000 appropriation is for the expense for replacing the gym floor and it's fully covered by insurance recoveries. So with that, I will take any questions. Okay, question, <clears throat> pardon me, questions for Jenny. So, so most of this is enterprise, which covers itself. Is that right? Uh, the general fund portion in the total of this is about 383000 And then the rest is capital projects funds are governmental type funds. They're funded by the general fund. But um, the, the very large ones, the 635000 that is water and sewer fund. That is the enterprise fund. Okay. So, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions for Jenny? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is a resolution to consider adoption of town manager's recommended 2021 through 25 portion of the capital improvement program. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so as Dana is walking up to the podium oh. to actually give it to you, I'd oh. just give you a few um, just talk or just a few uh, focus points for this discussion. Um, I ask to pay very close attention to the water tour over the next three years. That is critical for the metro area. Also, our transportation, our road projects as they're coming up, the Spring Street the, and Bureau Street, those are very critical. When we start getting into the out years, things like the Nature Center Phase 5, things like that are not in focus yet. We are undergoing a pretty it's significant question, analysis um, with our financial advisor to look at how we can afford to fund those things. Is it bonding? Is it going to be out of general fund? Uh, fund balance, how are we going to approach the, these questions in the out years? Um, that, that is something that we're going to take a stronger look at, and that, that, that's going. That's what we're going right now. As a matter of fact, this CIP next year will take a little bit different event and look a little bit different. This last year will be in this format. Next year we're going to roll out a new format with the help of our financial advisors and take, from, take it from more of a, a financial perspective. But I really cut, urge you all to focus on these next few years, especially as it pertains to water and sewer, especially as it pertains to transportation, because those work directly towards what we're trying to do with Metro and also the downtown. But anyway, Dan, go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And of course, we have the 2025 CIP, and as usual, it's a six year schedule, and it's really just a planning document, um, except for, of course, your first year would be. budget and then we're mainly dealing here with the, what we call the out-year amounts, which is a plan, how we're going to fund and support these projects through design and construction. We're going to preview our annual process a little bit for you, just uh, a little refresher. Again, 
how do we develop? And we, uh, we select concepts and we amend them based on, of course, we look at the adopted CIP, we look at recently identified needs and the changing conditions that, we, that we come to our attention. We get input from citizens. And then we move into uh, guidance from the planning commission, work with the town manager, and finally, it's here uh, for you, for the town council. Um, overall, our process really starts in October. We, in terms of at the staff level, uh, with projects proposed, reviewed, and we have a team of senior staff, and then projects are due uh, around the 1st of December. We get into some meetings to Kind of refine the program. We recommend it formally to the planning commission. Um, it used to always be uh, about the third week of January. The process has tipped back just a little with the planning commission's new schedule. So we, this year we we, uh, we were at the planning commission in February, um, and so it, at that level, it's it's still not fully constrained. We we. we uh, take into account the constraints we know about and uh, the funding sources that we have, but there's still a number of factors that are at work. Uh, so we have planning commission public hearing, we get the planning commission's recommendations, and that goes to the town manager, and that's per the Virginia Code. Most things, of course, go from the commission to the council, but the CIP is different. It goes um, to the town manager, and then that allows the town manager to develop the operating budget, uh, and typically have to uh, constrain the CIP uh, on various points. Um, we try to fund everything that the planning commission recommends, but uh, typically there are some adjustments um, to get the, the thing in shape and lined up with the budget. Um, so, of course, you, the council, consider a one year operating budget in April and um, when you do that, you're you're essentially authorizing the first year of the CIP, and then what you have before you now, of course, is the, the full six-year CIP is that roadmap that helps us in our work as we plan. Although none of these um, out-year things are uh, budgetary expenditures or, or firm financial commitments, or subject to the future what your future decisions are and what future accounts is going to decide. So we've got 47 projects this year, about like last year, 35 general fund, 12 within those enterprise funds, most of them are ongoing. We do have a couple of new projects. We have the police exterior garage uh, to accommodate uh, various needs that they have for, uh, for that facility out there to secure certain items and certain uh, uh, functions and then um, we also have uh, a new project is traffic signal element Herdon Center you might be familiar with a Sprouts project coming in there so we have 12 for proper is uh, really supporting that improvement. Oh, if we look at some of our function area, functional areas we have parks and recreation to look at um, <coughs> So it's just one way to break it out, but typically um, we highlight some of these things. Brady Park tennis courts, uh, that's really tracking as, as it was in the previous uh, CIP, renovation of the courts and the air structure, it's about 20 years old. Um, community Center Phase 5, we have design in FY23, construction in FY24, as in the previous CIP. Uh, we have Brandon Mead Park Nature Center, we set here for FY22 funding for a code review of the previous concept. It was an extensive concept that was worked up back in, I believe it was 06. Don't quote me. Uh, design in FY23, construction in FY25, um, and that's another general obligation bond funding type of project. Community development, we have nine general government projects, <coughs> and of course, most of these are implemented by public works. but. Uh, <coughs> He does sponsor some of these. We have five street improvement projects. We use our multimodal approach. Um, of course, we have East Elm Street, you're familiar with, it's a major BDOT project. Um, 
probably running up in the $45 million range. Uh, we have three pedestrian bicycle improvement projects that are related, <coughs> including the trails to that Herndon Metro Rail. It's very important. And we have wayfinding signs and historic markers. Uh, that's another one. There are 13 <coughs> projects uh, under public works. I'm not going to cover all those, but a lot of them relate to streets and intersections, traffic signals. We have the storm drainage project program that we've had for many years. Downtown utility relocation and stream restoration, which is a relatively new project supported by Fairfax County. Uh, trying to think of the name of the, the, the fund, but it, it'll come up with the stormwater tax. Thank you. That's what it was. Um, Information technology is important in FY19 includes implementation of next generation planning and programming software. Uh, we're supporting that with reserves, though, so we really need capital funding in FY20. We have police radio equipment um, that was mentioned by Jenny in the, uh, the reserves. Uh, we're covering part of that because what you'll see on the CIP sheet is just 630. Uh, Thousand in reserves, but uh, the actual will be 840 with the assuming you take that action that she's recommending next Tuesday. Um, again, the new project for the police exterior garage funding is in FY21, it's at 700,000. It's for secure storage of so things like police bicycles, bulk and emergency readiness equipment. Um, First, weather equipment, special uh, special emergency types of things, and, and there are other some police property that really needs to be protected. Uh, I know the golf course, we have um, some studies to complete in FY23. We have construction of a clubhouse <coughs> expansion, possibly in FY24. Probably looking as we move into the future, uh, the ability of the golf course fund to support that. The structure was built in 1980, so uh, renovating and expanding it is, is, is uh, what we're talking about. Uh, and then under master plan improvements, these are enhancements to the golf course master plan, which goes back a ways. But um, those are construction elements recommended by that <coughs> plan. Um, okay, water and sewer, always important. Um, we're really dealing with infrastructure investments for the long term with the town's comprehensive plan and the, the, the various elements of, uh, of that water and sewer <coughs> infrastructure, especially capacity purchases. Um, that's about 85% of the total. Uh, you need capacity to be able to support what's in the plan. Um, and then we have some support from Fairfax County for the sewer main relining and manhole rehabilitation. Um, and we have almost 10 million, 9 million, 900, whoops, 12,000 supported, uh, supported by water and sewer fund operating revenues and availability fees. So more of a pay-go mode on that as opposed to the bond fund items. Um, the total for the six-year six period is $46,851,000. Um, that's down a little good bit from last year, but I'll mention why. Um, total for just for FY20 for general government is $2,639,000. Of course, we show all the funding sources for every project, detail, you know, all these, at least a dozen sources for all these um, pieces of the puzzle sort of come together, as it were, to fund these things. And uh, we don't have out your projects that are just uh, TBD and, you know, open to the grant or, or whatever. We're, we're pretty 100% uh, pretty on covering everything. We have grant funding to support Almost 26 million for general government projects. It's about 56% of the total. We've got um, 
got the general fund recurring revenues supporting uh, over seven million. So that's um, that's over fifteen percent of the total. And then we, below this, if you were to draw a line across here, we're talking general obligation bonds. So at this point, we're looking at financing um, capital items. So we're looking at six six projects total over the six year period. 11.7 million, although that does include uh, over 3.3 million in the estimated reserve column. So that's just under 25% of the balance total for general government projects. So, you know, in rough terms, 70% plus um, sort of in the pay as you go mode, and then uh, under 25% in, in the finance mode. This is our general fund bond capacity breakout provided um, by the finance director. Total de debt capacity, you can compare. Um, it's based on 12% of general fund expenditures. Um, you can see what's outstanding at the end of the fiscal year and then your total available. So it's A minus B equals C. Um, and so this shows you sort of the direction um, and the extent to which we're taking advantage of the debt capacity. The breakdown of the proposed funding sources back to water and sewer, operating revenues and availability fees, 9.9 .9 million, water and sewer fund bonds, uh, which would be uh, understand they would be either revenue bonds or so-called double barrel bonds and that would be forty two million two hundred and fifty thousand perfect standing portion as I mentioned one point one million total for water and sewer is fifty three million three hundred five thousand from all sources. This this bar graph kind of gives you the um, visual uh, comparison uh, we're not doing capital leases this year, but I did leave it on there just to show you that um, it's a choice of a different approach this year not to do um, vehicles and other things that we might have done with capital leases. Um, that's another form of debt that we, we won't have, and so that, that, that's a picture that's a you know, significant in the overall, plus we're not paying a short-term lending interest rates, and uh, we're going more as a pay-as-you-go basis for things like vehicles, large vehicles, and so forth. Um, you can see the general obligation bond, um, of course our grant, grants uh, total over almost $26 million. It's, it's our biggest single uh, means of financing general government projects, and then general fund recurring revenues there at the bottom. So that that just kind of puts that in, in that type of perspective. Similar type of <coughs> graph, just a uh, big picture, you know, looking at downtown parking fund versus water and sewer fund versus golf course versus general fund, um, you know, all projects, all costs, uh, how do they compare? Um, and, and again, I've mentioned the water and sewer sources, so that's a comparison again, debt versus operating revenue, fair price gain portion. Yet another way to look, look at uh, comparison is just kind of list them all out, so that's what I did here, general fund, grants, offers, we've got almost two million uh, within the six year period, uh, and so forth and so on. CIP doesn't align with a comprehensive plan. We have major projects, um, especially the ones that require debt and so forth. They, they are in the adopted comprehensive plan. Um, we have other major infrastructure CIP projects like water and sewer that support the redevelopment of the comprehensive plan. And in fact, we had a number of recommendations, for instance, within the Metro Rail Stationary Plan related to sewer elements. So we have significant
transportation projects that are included in the comprehensive plan. They're also in regional plans and programs and supported by county, regional, state, and federal grants. We work hard to ensure that they're in the regional plans to the extent that we can get them in there and it helps us when, I'm, when we seek the funding. Um, as we start to wrap it up here, looking back, um, compare the town manager's recommended CIP before you to the planning commission recommendation. Again, the operating budget was completed in those weeks after the planning commission had made their recommendations. So we did have several projects requiring some adjustments, mostly projects that were supported by only by general fund. Um, so we had a number of those where we moved it from, we had to move out from FY20 to FY21. I listed those all out in the staff report. I'm not going to reel through each one, but um, the other significant factor I'd mention is that we had three three recurring maintenance type of projects that we have removed from the CIP, just going to be included in the operating budget. Um, these are the types of things that you know, years ago we had debates uh, at the planning commission level you know, whether or not to include these types of things. Uh, I think as the town has grown and uh, probably makes a lot of sense to keep these as, as more as maintenance. Um, we're talking uh, buildings major maintenance, obviously maintenance, right? Uh, the GSA vehicles, uh, they're really not long life capital facilities. Uh, you're not going to be uh, generally uh, working with uh, decades on that. And major road repaving as well. So those are the three uh, recurring maintenance projects. We're not we're going to have those in CIP. Um, I believe that wraps it up. Uh, <coughs> Questions. So what you're saying here are several themes we discussed in the budget as well. Some of the things out of CIP into operations that need to be in operations. Uh, they hit to the on the beat pole where we were targeting that to capital with one million dollars so hit. We had to recover some some other way. Um, you're also seeing some of the is, is just to put a finer point on what Daniel was saying, where once you get out of the couple year time frame, it gets to be more of a it's it's not constrained yet, as he was. I think that's the term he used, which means we don't have a sense. Um, we're projecting what revenues are. We're projecting what the fiscal, what, what our expenditure patterns are going to be as a government, and we're trying to fit it in. That's why I think we need to bring a financial analyst in to give us a plan, a financial plan to wrap around this, so we can say yes, we're doing X project in 2024, and here's how we're going to pay for it, assuming we set assumptions. Um, so that, that's going to be the next step we're going to do with this going into next year. Um, but I think I think Dan pretty much hit, hit the point. Um, just to, one other thing is the driver on the big water sewer number is the sewer capacity purchase. We have to buy a million gallons a day from some source, Fairfax water or Loudon water. And it's looking more and more like it's Loudon water. Um, and that is an expensive proposition and if we buy it from Either, either place, we're going to have to upsize pipes or create a way to transition the sewage to them. So if it's loud water, we've got to create a whole new way to get to them, and that's all encapsulated in those numbers you're seeing. Again, one of the other things that I just want to put a finer point on as well, you know we're going to debt finance a lot of these things. Availability fees can pay to service that debt. So as we go in and somebody pulls a five-inch main for a very large building of our metro, they're paying a big, big ticket chunk of money to us that's going to service that debt. Um, so that, that's how we pay this off. It's not going to be user fees, it's going to be the development. Now it's the issue, the rub there is the risk. The risk, they don't pay the availability fees to the building permits. So if, if let's say we, but we need to be planning and getting in front of them so they can pull their building permits. So there's a certain amount of risk that we're going to go add to lay the ground, buy the capacity, lay, put the pipe in place, put the pump stations in place. And if we have a market pause, we still have to pay the debt service. So again, that comes back to where our financial analysts come in. We look at the, the net position of the fund. We know how much we can go, how many, how many days, weeks, or months, 
and go um, at risk on these things, and that's part of the equation too. Before we get to that point, we'll be briefing you all much more in depth on those things. We're still a good year out from the capacity purchase, which is the big one, and we are right now trying to get our hands wrapped around pipe and, how, and getting it to what, whether Loudon or Fairfax, we're, we've talked to Loudon, now we're going back to talk to Fairfax, and, um, and there might be some, some good news there too, so we're, we're not well in terms of what we can do for Fairfax as we end up going to Loudon. Um, so so there, there's a lot of things in play on that. That's kind of the driver behind those big numbers is the availability, million gallons a day, plus the, um, the pipe to get it there, the pump stations to get it there. And, um, and then, depending on what occurs in the growth, if the growth is much more advanced by, by another million gallons at some point out 10, 12 years from now to, to meet that growth as well. So, but anyway, that's, that's why water and sewer is important. It is critical and it's where our biggest risk lies. It's something we got to keep our eye on that ball. It is, it is significant. Uh, questions for uh, for staff on the CIP. Okay. Uh, Jen. Okay, Jen and Sheila, comment, not a question. Okay. I just want to say thanks for putting in attachment three <coughs> and all the grant funding so that we can show that to the public. That you guys are really out there working hard helping us save money on this. Thank you. I like other people's money. I, I absolutely. You're flushing things out as it were. Uh, Jen. So number thirty, the eight hundred forty thousand dollars for. Um, Radios. Yeah, and then it says that Fairfax County is funding the Central Council. So, yes. So, sorry, how how much of that are we paying for? Or we're paying for the eight forty? No, this is for the console project. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. already done. It's the console. The console's done. Uh, we'll be buying the radios, and I will have a report on that in about two weeks about when we need to, but likely this year. And what we have been doing is we've been squirreling away money a little bit each year. And as Fairfax was delaying implementing this, we were still squirreling away the money to prepare for it. So we, we weren't sitting on our laurels waiting for them. We were getting in front of it. So we were able to, this, the, the, on the budget adjustment, that's the last installment to fully fund that effort. And as soon as MAG produces the report in two weeks, and we get a good date from the county, we have the money in the bank, we can move forward with the implementing it. Is this something that gets changed a lot? I feel like we've had several radio things over the past several years. Well, we actually have yeah. it. We've had the console. We knew this was coming down the road. There was the same one we keep Same one, about. but okay. same one. There was an urgency initially, then the county delayed it, as is typical with giant projects like this, because it relies on so many different jurisdictions. But we're prepared to at least pay for it. We don't have a choice when they make flip the switch. Right. We have to be on the same radio. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, Jim, I don't think you um, uh, and then number 31, the HPD garage for 700K. Um, so I just want to know the timing on that. That's, sorry, there's a lot of like sheets to look at, so I'm trying to remember where that goes. But um, so what's the, what year is that for? That is an FY21. FY21. It, it, it emerged this year. We that's what, yeah, initially like, that's had a draft one, for so. this year. And okay. then when we looked at the money and how it Budget. broke out, we kicked it a year because it, it's, it's still it, it's then. just an and it wasn't when in talking to the chief she could live a little bit longer without it so yeah. we um, she thankfully uh, didn't jump up down on my desk when we when I suggest moving it. And, uh, okay. It sounds like a lot of money, but I just but uh, so Okay. We were surprised at that too. It was much more costly than we thought. Yeah. We had a study done to look at that and, and look at the cost. Um, and then the two th two big ticket items on Parks and Rec, uh, which we usually talk about during the CFP discussion, which is the Community Center Phase 5, which we pushed. I know that's fiscal year 23 and 24 for 4.225. So I guess my question on that is, uh, I still feel a little hesitant on that um, item. I think especially as we talk about the community center and the percentage, I, it's a super useful resource to the community, to the community center. It's just whether we continue to invest further in it since it seems like it's, um, whether it's fully optimized and whether we need that. Certainly love that we're investing in the tennis courts and the tennis bubble. Um, so I guess my question is, 
you know, that it's in there for 23 and 24, if we want to push that a little further, especially given all this water and sewer discussion, like, does next year, do we just say, you know what, let's make it 24, 25? Like, do we just continue to push that if budget is constrained? Like, that one concerns me a little. It's a, it's a big ticket item. I would caution that decision this year, and let's pause and get our financial and analysts to finish their work. And if it looks like it's going to constrain us too much, then we can have that conversation perhaps next year. Because we're still a few years out. We're still a couple That's what I mean. Out. So it, start, it doesn't start so until 23, 24. That, that's so. why I was kind of saying at the outset is, you know, pay attention to water sort. That's a funded. We, we know exactly. where that money's coming from. We know where we're going to be spending it. it, yep. it we're now dining. We're off the 30,000 foot view on those questions. We're down to about 15,000 foot mm -hmm. on that. This is still at the 30,000 foot level. And we are, like I said, undergoing an analysis to how are we paying for these things. Forward, especially given how transportation projects have changed, yes. how transportation funding has changed, and we have critical transportation projects we have to get done, um, which that's got to be part of that conversation too, because that's all fine for that same money or potentially bonding. So, so give it, give us give us a little bit of time on that to straighten to give to give you all better advice, um, and I don't think we're in a position right now. Some more time, but next week. If we approve this, it's in no, there. no. We're we're talking. We we just started about a, like a few weeks back. We finally got to once we came off the budget, we started jetting up this conversation. It's something I wanted to do a year ago. We right. got overcome by other events. Okay. So is is your question like if we pass this as it's written, do we still have flexibility next year to, mm -hmm. to move things around? Right. Which we side? always do with these because okay. so it's further out. Okay. Right. Absolutely. So this and because the, the same question for running the the other big ticket item, which that's basically are twenty two and twenty three. Um, not for construction until 25, but to start some, um, yeah, that's penciled in for the three million then. And, and I would even suggest the 22, the FY22 expenditures, just to do a code review on the concept we have and take a look at that. I mean, that's not a very large ticket item. It's something we can go forward and we can certainly look at, you know, once we get the design and construction, those, those, we're ramping it up. But um, we can talk about that again once we get a better understanding of Davenport is to how we go about paying for all of this. Okay. Again, I want to get into the business of, if we say we're going to do something in 2023, we're doing something in 2023. We have a plan, we're executing an, in short of anything really dramatic changing. We're going back in 2023 on that. Um, I, I don't like to shift things around. I like to have a good solid plan, and we need a financial plan that, that makes sense to go with this plan, uh, the CIP plan. It's a great planning document. The planners do a great job. The PW does a great job on it. They do some great estimates. Um, the work is solid. It's just how do we pay for work? Was the projections were always done in house, and I don't think they were done with, with, with that it, that were as finely tuned as they probably should be. Um, operations impact, O and M impact of these projects. We have not done a, a great job on that in years past. And I'll tell you this from when I was sitting in Page's seat. You know, I, we, yeah, we kind of threw a number against the wall and said, just fill out a, a cell in a spreadsheet. It wasn't the level of analysis that goes into that. But I think it's important to understand the cost of ownership of these things is, is critical. And I think these are all questions we're asking now to answer. Okay. Or and help I think, us answer. And I think it's growing pains. We're doing this in a lot of areas where we used to be a lot smaller place dealing yeah. with lots lot smaller issues. And now we have a metro station. and. You know, our legal fees are going up because we have complicated things that we're dealing with, and it's kind of trickling into everything. So, and it is Davenport that is doing our analysis, and they do this all over the country, right? Or at least all over. Well, Virginia. they have they have just about everybody in every jurisdiction in Virginia, except for maybe just a handful, of four, five, six. Yeah, so, I mean, it's so amazing where I see Davenport different. people pop up. <clears throat> I have a lot of confidence in them, especially okay. after our bond rating issues. Yeah, so. yeah and, and how they handled that, and just the. Effortlessly, they handled it <laughs> from our perspective. But they did a phenomenal job. Other questions or comments on this? <coughs> so I, I, I want to thank the staff, but I also want to ask, what exactly feedback do you need from us on this at this point? Just um, um, is the general again is are the projects in the right place? I think Jen asked a very pivotal question. Is this, does this make sense? That's the type of feedback that we. we that we would ask for. Um, I would suggest that it's a great question, and we can have that conversation, but I think we should be giving you more data to inform the decision. Again, part of the thing is I, I really want to understand what our resouring is financially and capacity for public works to walk these projects. 
So this is kind of a, a just an initial. Yeah. So so we need to have this adopted okay. because it's like by by law we have to have an adopted CIP. Um, um, they know if I answer that. By what by when do we need an adopted CIP? Uh, first, first in the fiscal year, I yeah. do believe. So. So in the meantime, we'll, we'll be sorting through this, and when we come back next year, we're going to have a financial plan around this. We'll be briefing on it offline. Let's go. Cesar. Cesar. Uh, Cesar. Cesar. Um, Forty. Uh, the water and so sewer. Uh, Forty-two million. Maybe I wrote this down. Up to fifty-three is bond. 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 We'll, we'll borrow that money too, because again, it's going to come in a thirty million dollars capacity purchase. Roughly, it's a few million dollars here and there. I'm looking at Tammy to see if she'll give me a high or low. Um, I feel like I'm a card shark. Yeah, yeah, it's a game yeah. show. Um, it's around. Well, I, I get that money's cheap. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. And we have a triple A bond rating, and we're getting really yeah. good interest rates. And yes. well, there's a risk with that. I mean, oh, long yeah. term, right? So I think that's the discussion I'd like to have as well. Sure. As we look at these things, yes, it's easy and cheap to borrow, but at some point we have to decide. Is this a priority? I mean, how do we truly fund it? As opposed to kicking it down, hopefully we, we get an offset in, in actual services and Metro goes online and these other things happen, right? So that, that's a, a conversation I'd like to have. Sure. Um, the grant fund, if, if I'm right, I wrote this down, 26 mil. Was that right? Get that Roughly, right? yeah. yeah okay. um, tell me again how that's secured and is there any risk of that not being 26 mil. Well, it's, a, it's about a dozen different grant sources. We work hard to get all these. Um, they, we generally don't put anything in here unless it's pretty darn committed from the granting agency. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything at all in here that That's isn't, fine. isn't so, so solid. Some, to your, to your point, some of the risks that could occur. So the risk of there are time constraints on some of these things where we have to execute the grant by state certain or such, and if we don't, then we, then we lose the money. The other risk is the one we talked about on Spring Street. So we get into a land acquisition phase, and they go, whoa, 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 let's go. we had some scope changes, and we have, now real estate's more expensive, it's $2.5 million more expensive than we, than we thought it was gonna be. That's where the risk, that those are the elements of risk in the, in the grant. But, but if it's in here, it's, it's Pretty good, right? Yeah, it's we got we, we have something from the, a, the agency saying it's a world most likely. Yes, we're stroking this check to you. Okay. Good. Um, uh, of the three projects that were removed from the, the CIP and included in the actual uh, budget, so help me understand the, the difference. Our definition of what what maintenance and, and operate operational. I mean, help me understand how we can just move that. Stuff happen. Well, we, the way we looked at this before is if it was over, a, like a, vehicles over $50,000 are being replaced, a vehicle, which is an operational expense. It's replacing a vehicle that's used for an operational element. If it was over $50,000, it went into the CIP. Mm -hmm. uh, and so you would have a series of vehicles in the operating budget under $50,000 and a series of vehicles in the CIP for over $50,000. To me, that made that sense in terms of if you're taking the operational costs and applying those capital. So what we did this year is no, no, no. bring them all under into the general fund operating budget, and that's what we did this year. We pulled them out. Same thing with major road repaving. We have a repaving budget, and actually, if you really like it, a repaving budget, a concrete budget, and a major road repaving budget. The same okay. We then get grants from the state to come into the general fund. They get passed to the CIP. They get passed the general fund. It, it was it was just a mess. So we have a paving plan. Why are we delineating between the two? Let's lump them into a paving project and execute the paving plan against the paving project, put it in the place where we get the do not reimbursements coming in. That's the general fund operating budget. So we, we kind of brought those in and dropped them in there. Same thing with major building maintenance. We were putting, you know, the, the HVAC in this building is, is due to be replaced. All right, so that would be in the CFP. Um, the door over there needs to be replaced. That's in the general fund. What we decided is let's. Whole, that's cost of doing business. I can't operate that business with an AC that so doesn't work. So let's, and, or if it goes out unplanned, we're putting that out of the general fund to get it done. Um, so we, we brought that project out of the CIP 
and operationalize it in the operating budget. This was part of the instructions y'all have given me during the, during the budget um, guidance that y'all provided to the town, to the, to the staff, and we executed that. And that's, that's what Jerk, that's what he's talking about. I just wanted to make sure we, we were still aligned on the definition mm -hmm. of what belonged to the CIP. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this was all part of, this was the first year where it was called out of the CIP and mm -hmm. moved okay. completely. Um, I, I, again, just long-term risk, um, you know, the projection, the expenditure, that that is high risk. Mm -hmm. this part. And um, how we fund those things, uh, how we prioritize those, we definitely have to have that discussion. Um, and just so I'm clear, we haven't touched the B poll in like 20 some years, right? The rate itself. That's that's correct. Okay. The and it, it's the rates. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a schedule. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, so 20 years there. Okay. And also too, if I can just, we are still a little bit more expensive on most of our schedule than Fairfax County. That's that's another thing that might go in because we compete for businesses. Now, granted, our square footage is less than it is in Reston, and there's a lot of things going to a business relocating or staying here in town. But it's something to consider as we're considering. Okay. Other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you. Uh, is a resolution to approve a temporary license agreement to use a designated public space in the alley adjacent to Jimmy's Old Town Tavern for outdoor seating for an event, and this is town attorney. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, most of you have seen these uh, types of requests for a license agreement before. Uh, Jimmy's Old Town Tavern, um, the proprietor of the business located um, at the corner of um, Spring and Eldon Street. Um, and the owner of the property, Vicki Wellham, on behalf of Curtis Herndon Properties, applied for a temporary use permit to um, expand their uh, retail sales to the outdoors for one day. I uh, think everybody's aware of the annual event that's held there um, on Memorial Day weekend. Um, they have requested for, at least since I've been here, but maybe I think a few years before that, so less several or many years um, to use the alley um, that is town right away between um, or behind Jimmy's restaurant. Um, so they are asking that the council approve the temporary license agreement with grants permission for them to use the alley um, located there they're in for outdoor seating on May 26th. Um, they have um, and Dave Stromberg is here to address any issues. I'm, I'm looking for you to come up. Um, any issues you might have about the actual temporary license agreement, which controls what actually occurs, noise, sales, um, location of the seating, et cetera. Um, the license agreement um, controls their use of our property and requires the insurance. Can you answer any questions? And Dave's here to answer any questions about the actual use. Any questions on this issue? Same thing. So I saw that um, <clears throat> because there are a lot of these that are done administratively, and the fact that the town owns the property is why it comes before the town council. Right, exactly. If it's purely on private property, then it's just administrative approval. It's, it's just a use permit. I mean, it's just a temporary use permit. If it involves town property, it's a license agreement, just like it was a license agreement for um, Junction Square. Encroachment stoops. So this is an encroachment. Um, it is. They're using it. It's similar to that. They're It's a use of our property. They're encroaching on us. Is there <laughs> is there any way this could become administrative? I mean, I assume that having the insurance and all that. Uh, the reason I I ask this is just it's, I mean it it doesn't really need to come before us. The code of Virginia requires that any lease or any sale, um, transfer, lease, any use of so this counts as a of, lease. Okay, cool. Yeah, town, not town, but property of a locality um, be determined by their local governing body. Well, and is it the, this is one of those things too that I think for a long time had just been happening and then we realized, wait a minute, we should, mm -hmm. this is town land, we should, we're, we're not in, in uh, concurrence with the code, so we started several years ago 
going through yeah. this because it put us at risk because this was happening on our land, but we didn't have any agreement. Another one of those growing pains, things that just sort of happened over time. And so this is probably the fourth or fifth year well, or so. Well, every year I've been here, yeah. so it's four years. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and this is something that... Insurance is very important. Yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's probably the main... Do we not require point. insurance uh, when we do temporary permits for um, uh, private property? No. It's not well, if it's on private upstairs. property, if the town isn't at risk because we're not party to it. Uh, the parties may. <laughs> they probably should, but that's not our that's jurisdiction. Parties jurisdiction. Parties. Well, anyway. <laughs> All right, well, thank you. And I is this the it. thing that... Um, that can only happen four times a year. I don't remember the yes, exact code yes. section. Did you say that? And I just three times okay. a year, each okay. event can be four days per event. Okay, gotcha. Okay, other questions? Um, and next up is an ordinance to grant a second franchise <coughs> um, amendment uh, for a route expansion and increase in allowance of conduit. Uh, at next week's public hearing, the council will follow the bid process, which we've done several times. And this will also require a roll call vote. Um, all bids received will be entered into the record, and currently we have shockingly received just one bid. <laughs> I'll turn it over to Tammy Chastain, who is our Deputy Director of Public Works. Yeah. Good evening. Uh, this is uh, Second franchise Amendment for ZAO. Um, this is uh, essentially the Exhibit A um, showing their overall network within the town, and then this specific. Uh, a request for an extension. Um, so I zoomed in on it for you a little bit. Obviously, we only care about this part that goes into our property, but they are coming from Fairfax County. Um, and the route, this route will extend them to five conduit. The green will be eight conduit. Uh, currently, they're only authorized four. Um, and then there's a section on private property that comes back around to uh, our property again. So. Um, that is essentially their uh, amendment. To it. Yes. <laughs> and Tammy, the um, for those that like me yes. that didn't know what the difference between five conduit to eight conduit conduit means, yes. it's taking up more room in our right. Yes, exactly. Yep. Lots of stuff under there too. <laughs> uh, does this require any digging? Uh, it will. Um, some, there may be, um, <clears throat> this one may require a little bit of uh, concrete remo uh, sidewalk removal and replacement, but they'll obviously try to minimize the, uh, any, anything out there. Uh, a lot of it is directional bore, so you'll have a beginning hole and an ending hole. Gotcha. Um, uh, any questions or comments? <coughs> so along those lines, so five, it means five conduits under? Yeah, eight, so five. just means five yeah, pieces and then eight is eight. Uh-huh. They can have no more than <laughs> two There's not much room. room. No. <laughs> and each conduit is two inches, uh, two inch diameter. So <clears throat> you can get so rather large when you start inches. thinking of how much the conduit is. Other questions or comments? I sure hope that pulling this cable is easier than pulling cable through a 125 year old house because that will test the <laughs> I've heard. Uh, okay, thank you very much for being here. Um, we also have um, the next item is ordinance to approve a natural gas line easement to Columbia Gas for an underground main service line located on town owned property. I'll see if that's this again. Correct, and the reason why it's coming to me first is simply to um, let you know that this was expedited in order to um, allow Columbia Gas to uh, get the line to the elementary school to get the service started in order for kids to come back to school for next, um, for next year. And we've been working with Columbia Gas as well as the Fairfax County School System. I bet you didn't ask the kids what they thought about it. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it over to John, okay. who has all the engineering details. All right, great. Yes. Thank you. So if you've read the description, the location is to Clearview Elementary School, and the town property <coughs> is off of a cul-de-sac <coughs> at Young Avenue. Mm -hmm. There's town property that's adjacent to Five Lake Run Park, and the stream up through there that this has to cross. And so this easement is a 20-foot wide easement, basically from Young Avenue down to where it meets Fairfax County Park Authority land. Um, this is relatively standard as far as what they're asking for. It's, uh, again, 
most likely, we haven't seen any construction details, but what they've portrayed to us, most of this will be uh, boring as well. Um, once they have either your agreement that this is okay on the easement level, they'd still be held to all the standards of doing any, if it requires a site plan because of the amount of disturbance, it would be required to do that. If they can inform us that it's not going to require a site plan, they still would be required to support any right-of-way agreements where they're actually crossing in our right-of-way at the termination on Young Avenue, et cetera. Um, and yes, they'd be required to uh, support their project with performance bonds and insurance as we would require of anybody else. So it is relatively straightforward, but because it's on town property, we need the town council agreement. Any questions or comments? Yeah, I Pretty straightforward. Um, okay, that brings us to our general items, and there are three, I believe. Uh, first one is a resolution to authorize the removal of delinquent and uncollectible charges from the town's accounting records. It's Jenny Trickley once again. So uh, this one's easy, and actually, it does beg the question, which I just I'm going to serve this up first that I've asked Lisa Yates about, and I'm looking into. I'm coming to you to basically ask for your action to write off a whole $2,800 um, in uncollectible accounts. So this is more of our way of getting to say rah-rah, because last year we the write-off ask was $35,000, yeah. um, but that was also partially just a cleanup of things that should have been written off beforehand. So technically, um, we can't keep uh, uncollectible amounts on our books, um, and so this, will, this just gets the accounting records clear uh, with your approval. Um, however, if there is a way to collect these items, debt set off, anything like that, or somebody magically shows up one day and says, hey, I have this parking ticket, I'm going to pay you, we'll of course take it and thank you very <laughs> kindly and, you know, process the receipt. So, i um, proud of the fact that it's much lower um, than it was last year and uh, moving to a third party parking ticket vendor was definitely a huge part of that. Last year's parking ticket write off was almost $14,000. Um, it was about 156 tickets. Complus, in addition to providing the cool equipment, um, takes care of collections and, and they are more aggressive. Um, so that's really, that's really great. So that's what this item is all about. And uh, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Question? Sheila. So I noticed these are only from 15, yes. I think a couple from 14. But yes. when you had the big one, how many years did that go back? That that spanned a couple of years. Um, yeah. For example, there was one that spanned 2011 to 2014 yeah. or 2010. Yeah. That was the B poll and some of the uh, bounced checks. Um, there were a couple that spanned 2013, 16, and 17, but this is purely limited to you know, just the, the 15 and one item from 14. Okay. So. How long do you normally keep those? I want to say three years. Three, three is our statute of limitations for collections. This is from 14. <coughs> 15. Right. So we kept them on the books for close to five, but really we run out of our <coughs> ability to put some teeth into it. It's public shaming your address up there. <laughs> Actually, I was just looking at the town green. <laughs> Fairfax City publishes their delinquent taxpayer list on their website and in the newspaper. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, that'll make you pay your time. <laughs> but can we, really, can we really do that? Because I know we've had some meals tax issues that we weren't able to publicly discuss. Is that really legal? Well, we just researched we that. We just today. researched that. <laughs> like, uh, technically, there is an exemption in the secrecy of information section of the Administrative Code of Virginia, Title 23. <laughs> Well, secret secret one information. Yes, I don't know that it's it is, and it's it's actually a, it's the commissioners of the revenue and the treasurers, the elected ones in particular, are very very tight with their information. At the city, for example, we weren't even allowed read-only access to just the cash receipts portion 
of their software, we wouldn't have seen any of that information because they said absolutely not. It's actually a class two misdemeanor, I believe, to blab things. So the the things that are that people include on a beepo returns, for example, mm -hmm. confidential. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's super neat to know. Um, so people no, but private residents, yes. Well, because you're not yeah, I get yes. You yes. But now, yeah. Beepol, let, let me back up. The tax itself it's is not, different. Yeah. It's not, right? But the confidential information, like their gross receipts and their um, exemptions and Details. anything that's on their tax returns, that's all secret. Super duper secret. No. But it is, and it is important because not every company is public, obviously, and, and so we do have to keep that very guarded. And just to delineate, too, one further, the meals tax is then even different from the rest because the meals tax is paid by the business, so the remit said it's paid by the customers to the business, and they hold it on our behalf and then remit it. So it, it, that's a little bit handled. Yes, that, <laughs> and that's, that, and that's another question. Right. There's still that receipts component to it, mm -hmm. um, but we're not that, uh, that punitive yet, although... Maybe we should put some. I guess I would ask that if the council is interested in doing something to <coughs> specifically request what, yeah, uh, uh, regarding what tax and what you want to do. <laughs> Why don't we think all that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're going to think. But the real estate tax doesn't matter if it's business or individual. Correct. That's all, and that's all available on Fairfax County's website. Yeah. Whether or not you paid your tax. No. Mm -hmm. How much the how much, what's worth? What your yeah. oh, that's and whether or not and whether or not you're delinquent. You delinquent. can see that. Yeah. And no. how much you are delinquent. Yeah. yeah. The assessment is known, yeah. and then the mm -hmm. rate is known. So anyone can You should always it. become a, a business so that you don't. Have well, and it, it's it's for businesses too. Anybody yeah. for real no, estate. The real it's estate all tax there. is different yeah. than yep. your your people. Right. That's not because the profit. assessment is externally right. mm -hmm. computed by the assessor versus your your, your receipts is reporting based right. on your business. Okay. Does anyone have a question about the write-offs that we're looking at here? <laughs> <laughs> My only question is, it's just a curiosity. On, on attachment four, there were a couple of people um, things that were writing off like two dollars and forty-five cents, four dollars and twenty cents. How does something like that happen? Is it just something that's like an error in remitting the bill and we just can't chase it down? Probably okay. interest. Okay. Um, a couple, the check came in maybe a few days after and it just yeah. wasn't worth it. So these people are like, yeah, yeah. we're done here. All right. And, yeah. All right, cool. Any other questions or comments on the right? Okay. okay, good job, Jenny. Right. Thank you very much. Um, next up is a resolution to authorize a standard project administration agreement between the town and VDOT for redesign and reconstruction of the intersection of Monroe and Eldon Street. And John Irish, you're back. I'm back. Um, this actually can, uh, I'll give you a little bit of a background education that also ties into what Bill was talking about, grants and deadlines, et cetera. Um, <clears throat> revenue sharing projects through VDOT are a local administered uh, funding source that is matched by the locality and they have what they call a programmatic agreement that we signed back in 2013. That covers multiple projects and you can move projects in and out. That programmatic agreement had a one three year, it had a three year time frame with one three year extension. So as of June 30th of this year, that programmatic agreement no longer is effective and cannot be extended. The project at Eldon and Monroe was under this programmatic agreement and now has to be turned into what they call a standard project agreement. So now it becomes a standalone project under the same revenue sharing funding grant, but it just has to have a different title and it has to be administered by VDOT separately. So this is simply moving it from one type of agreement to another. And that is pretty much all this is doing. Um, and the reason it comes to you is because of the switch of program, at, program agreement, and it also allows the mayor to sign off on those agreements. Questions or comments? Bill? Does it change grant funding or anything in any way? Okay. That's just making sure. Yeah. Yeah, like make that known. <laughs> uh, any other questions or comments? 
Thank you very much. And finally, um, there is an ordinance to repeal Herndon Town Code Section 42.1 or dash 154, parking for certain purposes prohibited. And the town attorney will enlighten us um, yes, further on this. Is, um, we did get some information previously in the dispatch yes. on this. As you know, we've been doing some examination of our parking ordinances. Um, I had the opportunity to review this particular ordinance that has been on the books for many years. It's also um, in some other jurisdictions. That used to happen a lot where across the state we'd all enact the same <coughs> thing. Um, other jurisdictions have repealed it for um, several different reasons, and I can find no reason that this um, particular ordinance and its language needs to stay on the book. It's otherwise obsolete. People advertise cars on you know, the website now, not by putting signs in their cars. And also, um, again, by putting a sign in their cars, it involves other, involves the zoning ordinance too. So, a um, couple of different reasons why this is unnecessary any longer, and I would recommend that council repeal this particular ordinance. Um, communications with the police department and the parking enforcement, and they're in agreement with that. Uh, questions or comments? So you didn't mention, I thought I read that the um, state of Virginia doesn't allow us to, is that right? The state of Virginia doesn't allow us to enforce it anyway. No. It doesn't? No. Um, it does? You know, I would say that in terms of general parking regulations, we're enabled to um, regulate parking on our streets. Whether or not it's a good idea for the town to enforce that and whether or not um, in my legal opinion, something that is enforceable is is what I've addressed here. In my conclusion, that it's um, it has no um, value to parking enforcement. Sounds good. Is this uh looking at signs based on their content, haven't we had a lot of stink with that? Part, part of that <laughs> is um, is my concern yeah. um, and, the, and the fact that it's no longer necessary. Um, we have had conversations with our parking enforcement um, individual and, and the chief as well as. My chief and my lawyer think it's a good idea to get rid of it. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, Madam Vice Mayor. So if no one has any objections, could we move 8, 9, and 10 to the consent agenda? Uh, that works for me. Okay. That would be the write-offs, the um, authorization uh, for the redesign, and this parking ordinance. Yes. Okay. All right, so 8, 9, and 10 will go to consent. Thank you, ma'am. Um, speaking of consent, there are already two items on there which are just proclamations um, that uh, the, the requesters did not request recognition. Um, so if there's no discussion on that, um, that brings us to roundtable. Who would like to start us out? Everybody at once. No. Mm -hmm. Nothing this week. Okay. Thank you. Oh, great. Way to start us off. Anybody else? Uh, Sydney. Nothing this week. Oh. oh. Well, the pressure's on, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I have kind of a, um, I'm going to talk about the crib concerts again, because, um, we, can we, since there is, um, we still have litigation pending. Well, well, that's what I wanted to ask, because, so, he's closed his concert venue, according to his website, and his house is for sale, so that's why I wanted to ask, what happens with the pending litigation, given that he it's seems still, like he's kind of giving up, so. It's still there regardless of whether the dependent or the the actual use of the property that caused the BZA decision exists or not we still have we still filed um, regarding that particular BZA decision and we need to um, follow through with that um, there's currently a hearing set for the end of May um, he has not filed an answer to our our um, petition filed an answer to the other petition. Both of those are still out there. They were not consolidated. Um, whether or not the court will consolidate them or not, um, I think will not at this point. But um, there's, there still is litigation pending. The fact that he has not filed an answer as of this point does not mean that he may not decide to do that and request leave of court to do that, even though it would be late. 
So wait, you said he did file a response to the other one, mm -hmm. to the, the Downer Mitchell one, mm -hmm. but not to the town one. Mm -hmm. And so I guess what I'm worried or asking about is that the town is still spending time, money, and resources on this case and litigation, even though it's really it seems like for naught. And I just wanted to say I think that this is just feels like a huge waste of time, which we already talked about, but so it sounds like that's still what we have to follow through with. From a lawyer's point of view, yes. I have to pursue the, the petition that I filed in the court, um, even though you could direct me to do something different, um, there would, we would still need to resolve that matter um, by some sort of action on the council. I didn't we need to have a closed meeting in the first place. I don't want to do anything that makes us spend any more resources on this. Well, that's what I mean. Like, can we have, do we have to have a closed meeting? Can we talk about it here to say, like, it just seems like a colossal waste of time, in which it already did, and now it seems like In terms of it. what is still outstanding out there, in terms of litigation, and the fact that I told you there could still be the fact that the person hasn't filed yet, you know, is not, con does, is not um, conclusive, mm -hmm. um, that I think you would want to, I would recommend that you discuss, it, discuss pending litigation and what to do with that in a closed session you know, the will to do that. And should, if to do that, should we wait until after May 25th? Is that the date you mentioned? Um, you can. To see if we you can. get a response? Um, I, I would urge that at this point. Um, okay, got until it. the court has had a chance to review it. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Okay. Do you need a council majority to say we want to do that, or? No, no, no. I, in, I think it's just for the oh. Okay, <laughs> just trying to cover all our bases. Okay, thank I think you. I feel comfortable with that. Okay, all right. Who's next? No thank comments. You. Thank you. It's like the very bottom of our. Who's next? Sheila Cesar. 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 Okay. Um, Rotary had our senior senior prom I event. <laughs> Thank you very much for HPD showing up to help us. Mm -hmm. And we um, returned the favor by sending the uh, evening weekend shift the leftover lasagna, salad, etc. So, <laughs> so we, appreciate we, we really appreciated their help. Thank you very much. Um, also, can we get an update on the retreat information? Sure. I understand you have an individual for... Right. Well, based on the conversations with some of you who showed interest in the retreat, um, it wasn't, it seemed to me that it wasn't standard, you know, we're doing some goal setting, we're doing some visioning, or the things that the Virginia Institute of Government has, a stable of people ready to come up and assist us. So uh, it, it seemed to be more focused on communications and working, so that as a group, group dynamics related questions, I turned my attention to ICMA, um, who did have a, a, a person who had just recently published a, a novel article about council interactions in, in the Public Management Magazine. Um, I reached out to him, his name is Michael Conda, he's, he's, he's located in, um, in Texas. He, uh, he and I spent probably, of course, several conversations, about three hours on the phone, or of course, three hours, three conversations. Um, he was uh, interested in, in, in Forming a retreat on our behalf, he does code councils around the nation. Um, he, he, he will be, it's not just a retreat, fire and forget it sort of thing, he would be a resource available to us over the course of the next year to, to work with him. Um, it would be cost of work for work to bring him back, but it, he would certainly work on the phone. How this would unfold um, is there would obviously be some sort of leadership survey instrument that would be distributed to each of you with a letter of introduction for me introducing Mike to you all. Um, he would then uh, take that survey instrument, he would come into town or of course of one-on-one -on -one meetings with you all for like an hour each over the course of a, of a day or so, um, he would kind of, or a day or two, he would meet with you all and get your take on what, is, what you hope to get out of the retreat, what you're hoping to, to uh, achieve by this. He would then go back tex to Texas, he would then work up a, a, a program that is specific to Hermit. Um, he would work with me, and if any getting questions from you, he'd obviously call you all. Um, and then he would come in, and he, he perceives based on um, my conversations with him and his research in the town, it would be 
approximately either a two evenings, four hours of peace, or one weekend day of eight hours um, where he would fly to town and he would perform the retreat. Um, he would then follow up. We'd have a follow up after the fact with him as well. And then he would be available to you all uh, for comments, questions, or uh, this did move forward for the next year. Um, it, it, it was, he, he's a delightful guy. He, he, he truly is engaged. He truly has a passion for this. He is a certified, he's a certified manager. He's been a manager for 35 years. Now he's in the consulting business and he focuses on communications and council dynamics. That's something. As a matter of fact, he said, if you want to talk about strategy, I'm not your guy. I have somebody I can get you. But that's not my focus. What's the budget on. he's proposing for this? Uh, $17,000. How much was the retreat last year? Uh, the last year's retreat, I think, was somewhere around six total. Six thousand dollars. That again, uh, that was a different different animal. That was somebody out of the Virginia government. That was somebody that was, and quite frankly, I don't think that was a well conceived. That was actually two years ago. That was a well conceived retreat. Uh, but that's, I haven't thought the last two retreats were worth the money we spent on them. In fact, two retreats ago, I urged the town, town manager not to pay the second half of the fee because we came out of it more divided than we entered, which well, is exactly the opposite of what a retreat is. Having is. similar experiences with that retreat moderator at a staff retreat, I have, I have a very similar opinion of, of her capabilities. Uh, she, they, when I did talk to the institute, they said, if you're going to go with somebody, they kept throwing her name out. And I went, okay, eh, let's guess again. And, uh, and they were unable to, they, they found a person we use for staff retreats. I think they're great for staff, but I don't think they'd be very good for you. Um, and somebody I, I, I get along with great as well. As a matter of fact, she asked me to write a quarter for her book for, um, that she's trying to get published. Um, she's phenomenal, uh, but I don't think she is suited for this group. She's more of a staff type of person. But th this one specializes in council dynamics and council. needed for the group but we're five months into our term and this has been going on for months so um, I wish we had come up with something sooner because now five months down the road we're saying oh dear I did give you some names I don't know what happened with those I don't know we, we, did, we, 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 we did we I called Which one or two I didn't make they were they, yeah. they were targeting public sector boards of directors mm -hmm. focused it's a, and they, they weren't it wasn't a political environment type of operation so I was looking at actually they would be I, my guess would be based on their lateral material based on the, the research they would probably end up being the same neighborhood as far as to spend given that we just raised taxes to turn around and spend seventeen thousand dollars on a council retreat and Sheila hadn't even thought about that by the time he gets here it would be six to seven months into the retreat well I've been bringing this up for well, I five months that so you, our manager much? was trying to find the right kind of person because we did keep hearing the same three or four names which didn't seem yes. like that would that would work no, I gave a whole list of other names from a professional consultant that I knew. I didn't know any of the people they had on the list, but yeah, they, um, they, they were more corporate focused, corporate board focused. Um, well, then we need to get something because the, it's just going to continue. What's going to continue? Uh, the bickering, the less than cordial effect we have for one another often and I just don't think that's appropriate. I don't like seeing our staff have to sit through some of that. So. Well, I agree our term got off to a bumpy start but I think it's pretty part of the course most of, most of the time when a new council is seated. It takes a couple months to kind of get your bearings. We just passed a budget and we're 
organized and some of the best discussion we've ever had, in, in my opinion. I think that our, the voters elected us to work together professionally and really the only difference I think with this body and previous bodies is that some of us used to be closer personally and I think that it's on us to fix that. And I don't think we need a consultant or to spend $17,000 of taxpayer money to do that. Sheila, who seems to advocate for this. I don't know if other folks want to speak up for that. I'm supportive of this. Um, unless I think the, the money is uh, surprising yeah. to me, but I'm definitely supportive of doing this. I mean, we had people last time thinking we needed some, some type of intervention at the council level because it was very obvious to the public. So I just don't want us spending another two years like that. We, we did it last time. We did hire a consultant last time. No, we did not for. We had a retreat last time, the beginning Are of the year. Are you talking about something else, Sheila? I'm talking about once things got to this horrible situation where the public was mentioning it, mentioning it frequently about um, the council not getting along very well. So. Surprising people that I didn't expect say that they don't watch or listen to our sessions anymore because they're uncomfortable. People that I don't know very well. Yeah. So I think that was true the first few sessions, but I haven't felt that in the last two or three months. Actually, I think that if we all decide we're going to get along professionally, we can do it. So everybody wants to just act this? I think it's the money that's throwing me off, honestly. It's not really the anything else. Do you think you could get him down and I, I think that we should keep his name and when the next term rolls around, have him ready to roll in you know, January or February. I it sounds like a great find. He's yeah, very different I, from I'm, anybody I'm, we've heard of. I'll be honest with you. I'm not, we, after our talks, <coughs> we're planning to meet when we're both in Nashville for the ICMA conference later in the year. Really enjoyed our interchanges. He gave me a lot of advice that I've taken personally, and I thought you know, solid, sound, sound stuff. I've looked at this as a relationship that I'm going to continue regardless of whether or not this is, goes forward. Um, I think he's based on his email to me. I mean, a lot of it is you know posturing, sales posturing, but he, he did talk to me about my role in ICMA, and he did cut some corners for us on that front, and giving us a little bit extra in terms of not just. He just added without charge on his again, his email, he said, basically, your role has to be in things like that. He's excited to help us out if that's what he needs. Yes. I, uh, I support this. I think it's. Um, a good thing. Uh, and kudos to the vice mayor for stepping out and trying to show some leadership on this. I, I think it's definitely um, something that we should address. Um, I think, though, unless everyone is convinced that there needs to be uh, a different sort of adjustment on how we engage, uh, then it's a waste of time and money. So, uh, unless everyone's committed to it. It's not going to make a bit of a difference, but I just support this. I think it's a good idea. I think we can do it without $17,000 consultant. I think I'm in the middle of this one. The reason is we should be able to resolve the problem ourselves, but having said that, an external person giving different perspective and you know fresh pair of eyes is also necessary. Even successful, successful people have their own coach or you know people who can help them with conflict resolution and all those things. People hire external. So we should be able to resolve our issues, communication, relationship, all those things. We have to take the initiative also. Because if we don't take 
hiring any external person is not going to affect anything. So it's, it's, it's both. But at the same time, $17,000 of taxpayers' money is too much. What I can also do is, is his article in public management, so it's a really good article about, about really focusing on what is good for the community and using that as a, as a springboard to, to getting beyond this. And I'll be glad to share that with you all. I'll get a and get that out to you all. Um, he also has two books out there. He's, he's he sent me one, apparently I got an email today. It's, from the Postal Service is inbound to me. It was a, I can see the note you wrote on it, which is, you know, just I thought I'd just give this to you. Just, just, uh, yeah, yeah. Now, I'll be glad to share that as well. Um, there, again, <coughs> this man, I, I have I got a good read on him in my conversations and reading the article. And, uh, and like I said, I, I intend to uh, keep him in the network for moving forward because he's, and I, I definitely. Gave me a lot of good advice over the our personal conversations. Um, if you want to press pause on that, read the article, look at the, you know, potentially peruse the book when it gets here in the next couple of days, that, that's certainly an option as well. I think the 17,000 is out of the question then. But I think something would. It, it, one of the things he was really excited about this group that, that you know, based on my, my conversations with him, is truly all have very similar views of where you want this community to be. And that's been apparent to me since the day we all received it. And as a matter of fact, one of the things I had told him in my conversation is if I gave them a survey on local, state, national issues, anonymous, and they handed them back, I doubt I could delineate from what. Um, that, that's the, the truly, that's the policy space you're operating in isn't that it's, 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 it's very, there's a lot of commonality there. And it just, it, he, he looked at that as, as the place where you all can focus on as a way to springboard yourself and get back to you know, best friends, best buddies. That, that's another question. They truly get back to professional relations, working on yourself it, it, from that springboard of what's best for this community. And, um, and that's, that's kind of in my conversation with him where he was excited to work with this group because normally, Guess what? You are not welcome in this. He said he see, he has seen <laughs> truly dysfunctional groups governing, and or politically they're apart, personally they're apart, and it, and he and he is trying to work with groups like that that do too. And again, he, there are, there's like six. He's on a permanent call rotation. Council's not permanent call rotation. <laughs> it, it's kind of like Dr. Phil. Um, yeah, something behind it. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. <laughs> Um, but uh, again, it, there are some really good things happening with this group that he sees and he's identified. And um, again, I think that's that's where we coalesce, where you have to coalesce around this. Is these great things that are happening in this community. Because as he pointed, you know, I'm telling him everything that's going on. He's going, I mean, you're really in that transformational stage, aren't you? It's like, yeah, I was in a transformational stage. Absolutely. And I'm so about this and he started talking about where you all were. He went out and researched your bios. He was impressed by the group. Oh, he, no, he, he said, you know, not often does he see an accomplished group of people in their various fields of study getting together and, where, and he, he sees a lot of good that is potentially sitting right here at this table. And so um, I don't think I'm betraying confidence by telling you all that. But that that's substance of a lot of our conversation. You already brought some positive <laughs> that's right. No, but it's true. It's, it's, it's true. It, these were very, you know, we talked one Sunday morning, and by the time I hung up, I was, I was feeling, you know, it, it was like, wow, let me go do something. Let me go to the gym. I'm, I, I'm, I'm like, getting exercise. So, no, he, he, again, there's there's a lot to be said about the group around this So, um, why don't you send us that um, sure. article that you uh, links to the the two books you've suggested, mm -hmm. and we can look at some of them. No, I can send you all his information as well. So I'm, I'm a net net kind of guy. Yeah, if we're not in for this, I'm a net net kind of guy. So if we're not in it for the 17k, it's a waste of time, quite frankly. What knowing? 
information. Yeah. I mean, if, you, if no one at this point is sold or seen the value at 17000 plus expenses. No, no. It's included. It's included. It's included. It's included. That, that, and, that, and that's where, no, that's where he said his, his airfare, his hotel, he's uh, been All out. I'm saying is twenty k. we either enter, I mean, I just, I just don't see the need to spend his time or anyone else's time. We're not going to do this. But if you're not in, in it now, then reading the book's not going to change it. Offer to send an article. That seems like a reasonable. That's thing. a two-page article, and actually, the article is written. Still, it's written. It's, it's, it's written for me. It's, it's written for me to facilitate it with you. Okay. And when I called him up, I was like, "So my prediction is yeah. no one will change your mind. We're not going to do this. That's my sense." But I don't think the article was intended to change our mind. I thought it was just too. It's too great article. You can do with it whatever you want. I mean, it, it so the point of having mind. this discussion was to decide whether or not this was something we were. That was why I brought it up because I've been bringing it up for how many months now? So it's a dead horse. That I that, that, that's what I'm trying to get her. I think she wanted that answer, and I think that's what I'm trying to help. So he's not the only option out there. I mean, he sounds wonderful, but he's that, not the only option. That that's the one that ICMA turned me on to after the after the institute couldn't wasn't satisfying me after looking at the private sector where those issues are vastly different the costs would probably be about the I looked at ICMA and, and got down this path. Can you keep this option open and you'll put out an alternative? I we can, but I think the further down the road the less we're gonna get for our money because we're gonna have I mean if we don't get to this until what are we thinking, probably August before he could get here or is it sooner? No he, I think we can get in here sooner. Schedules. Yeah, we have to look at schedules. I don't. I don't think his schedule is going to be the same. Well, that's the yeah. problem. We yeah. put it off so late. Now it's almost summer, summer and then everybody's going to say I can't be there because I'm gone for the whole summer. So then you. I still I stand by. Cheap. Most of us have known each other for years, and we could solve this without a consultant. We just talk to each other. That's the yeah. That's the Why don't we go out for drinks and talk? We did it two weeks ago, and it was lovely. I thought we were turning a page after the budget meeting. No town business was discussed. <laughs> I can vouch for that. But, I mean, there was some camaraderie there. And you paid for drinks, so thank you. Well, if you want to, okay. I can buy a lot of drinks for $17,000. <laughs> Wait, we're not paying for that. The town is not, it's the town. Not, it's not the town. No, I'm not trying to be flippy, you guys. I just really think that what, what Bill just said that he, that the consultant said after looking at us, and this is a really unique group. I've had a lot of councils across Virginia. We don't look like other councils. Our background isn't like other councils. I just think we can do this. I'm not nearly as worried about things as I was several months ago. And I was hoping I wasn't the only one. Well, you're not the only one. But that doesn't, I, I mean, I, I would like to do this, all things being equal, if 17,000 were not the amount of money, because I think it could benefit us regardless of what our relationships are. However, um, if we decide that we're going to get together for drinks after every council meeting and have some camaraderie, <laughs> I think we could probably move in the right direction. That would be a nice start. And yeah, it's undisclosed cool. location. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know if it has to be that rigid. I just really think that we're not giving ourselves enough credit as colleagues and neighbors and human beings. I think we can do this. Okay. I'd like to try. Well, let's try then. I'm in. And speaking of, since, since we have kind of gone down the road and the, the timing has become an issue, I'd just like to throw out, maybe this will be, was that your, were you done with your round table? I guess so. Well, let me say this, and if you have more, you can come back. <coughs> I think that uh, for the next term, we, we always say this, and then we get wrapped up in the term, and we don't do this, but I, I would like to propose that, uh, you know, when the next election season rolls around, that the sitting council or someone sets the date of here's when the swearing in is going to be. We're going to have a retreat. It's going to be one of these two weekends. So that if you're running for council and you're filed your papers in June, you know, hey, I better have these dates open because then we wouldn't run into this problem. And we have talked about that for the last six years. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then it never, it never happens. happens. So <coughs> just a thought. So put it in your schedule. Sheila, did you have anything else? I didn't want to cut you off. No. Um, I don't have anything either. So, Mr. Tony Andrew. Yes, I do. Um, so, uh, 
you all have gotten the dates on the next round table. It is. Yes, Yes, it's at the NRC. Um, NRC is the folks out there are gracious enough to provide us with translate support. They're gracious enough to uh, provide us the space. Uh, they're helping us with advertising and marketing as well. Um, so they're stepping up on that front as well. Uh, we are, a um, couple things are being done differently. Uh, we are paying for, paying for the NRC to provide child care. Right. Or we're not providing child, I want to reiterate, we're not providing child care. The NRC will pay, provide child care for, pay for that. At 7 p.m.? No, during the day. No, 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 no. It's no, that's meetings. right. That's the meeting. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Um, and the other thing we're making a change with is the note taking. I thought the note taking was on even last time, and but now we're adding in the mix of potential translations going on and various things like that potentially, and it would it would be it was driving the cost of that up considerably. Is was when I was looking into it. And then there was talk about can we put uh, recording devices on each table and then have a you know, have somebody translate it back or you know, take it back. And that was, then we started having, the NRC thought that was a terrible idea because folks yeah. were being <laughs> and, so, and, and again, it, so we're, we're just going to pull back from the note taking as a whole. This is truly to get you all with your constituents. Um, and so moving forward, I think the note taking is something we're probably going to drop off uh, because of the idea. See this. Whatever issues we have, I'll think about it. I think we'll, we'll probably have more, but I think you've covered them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're going to meet with NRC after this. And yes. Iron out so, some details. So, so yeah, the high level stuff's been decided now. The devil's in the details. Um, but again, any questions that you all have about this roundtable before, and we'll do this one. We'll take a pause over the summer, and as we're doing that, we'll start planning for the fall and how that. And then we'll circle back with y'all. Move that and we'll probably have a discussion I with y'all about how you want to take this program moving forward. I uh, would also like to suggest that the council members there take the notes because we're the people who are bringing it back. So um, I was the best note taker in my college. My notes are beautiful. I was there for <laughs> half the first one and I'm reading the notes and I was confused. So it, it was, that, that's why. I think it's a hard it, task. It's a, a hard conversation. Task. And these aren't folks that do that for a living. This, right. these, we were grabbing staff that had some note taking ability, and, and it just, it just, didn't, that, well, that's one where I'll say that idea was. Although I had three different note takers because I was at three different tables, mm -hmm. um, it did not follow the conversation that went on at my table at <laughs> all. Because I'm going, so what's so said? So I, I know how hard that is. Yes. And if you're going to ask that the person, the council members sit there and take the notes. I, it's kind of hard to participate in a meeting because I've been on committees for Fairfax County, and then they said, uh, we don't, "Can I ask a question? We want you to take why, the notes. Why do we need to take notes? Do yeah. we need to take notes? No. No. What are we doing? No, I think something that? meaningful, something actual, something that really that you want to come back to me and say, "Hey, manager, why did you let this happen?" Or <laughs> we that, can do that. absolutely. Okay. I followed up with everybody that had specific questions, and I got their emails, and I made sure that I responded and got mm -hmm. them. If I told them about something, then I said, if they said. Well, they just they just threw the downtown redevelopment. I mean, that was just knee jerk overnight. And I'm like, no, I am going to send you the timeline. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. That's and That's I funny. and I sent them these things so that they could see what had happened. And they were like, oh wow, I didn't realize that. So I did take care of that. But maybe we're spending a lot of time and energy on something that. I thought we had to have some sort of minutes. No, yeah. no, it, it, it was a, it was a way. I, I just wanted to capture a couple things, and I'll, yeah. I'll tell you right now. If there is a request for information that is a FOIA request, you are a public official. They hand it to you. We have to get that back to us. Mm -hmm. So you have to get. So yeah. if that comes up, grab me and drag me over and say, "Hey, we have a we have a request for records." We want to have a record. I'm sorry. And so it was for that, or anything that was like really actionable that I that mm -hmm. so I could take it the next day and start working on. No, well, would it, I mean, it wouldn't be hard to have a just a list at each table of just the major topics that came up, and then if there was something, a major request or concern or something, the, the council member is going to remember what that was and bring it to the manager. Like with uh, our attorney, um, 
I had someone bring up Airbnb, so I got the email and installed it to her and emailed the person and said, this is who can help you with that. So, but Speaking of Airbnb, the Planning Commission has um, uh, continued that until, um, I think, September, so waiting to see what the county's doing. I okay. think it, it, it will look better, and it is better that we are council members, we are public servants. So what we can do is we can talk to people. If they have concerns, you can just write down the bullet points. You don't have to be like verbatim, right? right. And then no. if there is any questions, you can ask their email, right. put their email, and then go home and you know do your research and reply if you need it, right? We don't need somebody to take the notes. Yeah. It's my my, my heart. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, it was yeah. March 2nd, right? It was March 2nd. I believe so, yeah. Yes, it was. I took it. <laughs> yes. All right. Cesar will be the official <laughs> notator. Yeah, to his point, just bullet points. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Here's what we got. Well, that's what I would have been. In all fairness, this is model act enforcement. Enforcement does not take notes, and what we suggested we were to take notes, it was kind of funny. Like, why would you do that? So like, now, we, now maybe why. we know why. <laughs> well, well, don't touch the stove. But it hurt. So yeah. Yeah, I did the same thing. I had all my. Some of these things we've talked about. So yeah. Just right. for a reminder. And and just like last time, I'll be there in the room, um, and we'll be there in the room. <laughs> no, I won't be security that day, I'll just be. It really is a lot of fun. Yeah. It really was It was fun. very well received. Yeah. You will love it. And, and then depending on what happens, then we'll talk about what the next one will look like. And, we'll just, cool. All right. okay. and um, on that note, uh, we did talk about the downtown. The downtown uh, HPRP is hearing the three certificates for Comstock next Wednesday. So 7 p.m. in the council chambers. Um, if there are people that you know that are very passionate about this project, I would suggest they come out and speak at the public hearing. That would be a, a welcomed thing. Um, with as many people we can get on record as possible I think, to show the community's um, will on this matter uh, will certainly uh, help us in the long term. Um, so I would, I would encourage you all to talk to What's the date and time? May 15th, May 15th, 7 p.m. Next Wednesday. So, Mr. Town Manager, yes. if our town clerk was here at this point, she would be saying if any of you are planning on appearing at that hearing, she needs to know because if more than two of you were there, she has to do a notice. Um, so, yes. if you know right now that that's going to occur, it will be on ACT. I don't plan to attend. I don't like to do that. I watch it on TV. Yeah. Well, I came to the, the work right. session, but I, I kind of came late and then left. Well, it's only if there's but, right. Nobody if there ends up there. being if everybody thinks oh such and such. Is if you're the third one right. to get there, you have to leave. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you do, or do get out with one of the first two. <laughs> Listen, I was an elementary school teacher. I know how these things work. That was funny. I always have a question about that. If you're just sitting in the audience, it's a, how is that a public meeting? Well, it's because it's, it's town a, business it's that we a, are it's there. It's town business being conducted, and it's protection for this body that that's been advertised that you're going to be there. Some sort I don't have a problem with it. I just. We do not allow alcohol in town buildings, but sitting in the comfort of your living room. <laughs> Decide. I've seen some hats where you can put a little beer can. Can't do it here. Um, <laughs> one more thing is I will be out from about 11 o'clock Thursday through Friday for medical related things and I'll be back on Monday. Looks like that's what It's none of our business. We're we wish you well. No. Nothing to be concerned about. Okay. I'm not getting a short open this time. Oh, good. Mm. Keep it up. All right. Does anybody who uh, passed come up with something they needed to share? Awesome. Well, that concludes our agenda this evening, Madam Vice Mayor. I move we adjourn.